الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحب التفلا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أسأل الله كريم رب العرش العظيم أن يتولنا في الدنيا والآخرة May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in your day Bless us all, protect us all, and bless us with the truth And bless us to adhere to the truth wherever it may come from And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many shortcomings for speaking without knowledge practicing without knowledge, and doing anything which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there was a comment made by a person who goes under the name of Truth Serum. They said, so just let the Saudis do as they want and then stay quiet. When you see the injustice and you're asked on the day of reckoning, what did you do to stop you stayed quiet? Because... I think you, you're you quoting out of context, bro. So first and foremost, I'm assuming that this person is a Muslim, but there was no Islamic greeting, but they are really concerned about the affairs of Saudi Arabia. And what's very interesting is they criticize the quoting of a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it was out of context. But again, having studied this issue in depth, devoting a, a significant portion of my life to these issues, of takfir and these issues of leadership and these issues of uh, talking about misguidance and creed that we made that hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or we use that hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in light of many other nasus from the Quran and the Sunnah and from the nasus from the Quran as our this person said which is out of context Allah says now I don't know if they want to debate with Allah or not but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَأَعْتِيُوا اللَّهُ وَأَعْتِيُوا الرَّسُولُ وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ Obey Allah and obey His Messenger and those charged in authority amongst you. So the scholars of Islam mention a few important things that we can gain amongst many things that we can gain from this nas. And one of the things is that when we talk about obedience and obedience to the Muslim ruler, that the obedience to Allah and his messenger, although there's a relationship with being obedient to the Muslim ruler, by being obedient to the Muslim ruler, you're being obedient to Allah and his messenger, as long as the Muslim ruler is not calling you to disobedience. So the obedience to Allah and his messenger, we call this thought mutlaq. We call this unres unrestricted obedience, meaning it's in the Quran, we obey. It's in the authentic sunnah, we obey. As far as the Muslim ruler or those charged in authority over us, that could also mean your parents, it could also mean, but generally the people of Tafsir refer to the Muslim rulers and also the uh, scholars. That, that can, uh, we, we call this ta'a muqayyid. We call this the restricted obedience, meaning you can, that if they call you to disobedience to a law, you do not obey them in that issue. Let's give an example for Mr. Truth Seeker. Mr. Truth Seeker, uh, first and foremost, if we look at an example, your parents, okay? I think if you know anything about Islam, if you're a Muslim, you will understand that that is a very important duty. Allah says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, obey, uh, and your Lord has commanded you, to worship none other alone, and to parents be obedient. This verse shows us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires that we are obedient to parents, and he linked it with the worship of him and him alone, and obedience to him. Meaning it is so important to be obedient to parents that this is like Allah mentioned it along with Tawheed, which is the greatest thing that you could do in Islam, if you don't know. And with that being the case, we all can agree, without even going to all the nuts and go all to what the scholars have said throughout history, that we should not be unrestrictedly obedient to your parents. Meaning if your parents tell you to do something haram, you can't do it. If your parents say, hey son, go get me a beer, go get me some cigarettes, you cannot do that as a Muslim. Even though you have to be obedient to your parents, but you're obedient to them in relation to Fatima. And another point is that that does not mean if your parents order you to get a beer and you say, I can't, you know, as a Muslim, you know, I'm practicing or, you know, 
this will be disobedient to Allah and I don't want the sin, oh my father, oh my mother, with respect, that doesn't mean now you're disobedient in every command. They tell you to go to school. No, I'm not going to be obedient now because you told me to get a beer. They tell you to do your homework. No, not anymore. They tell you to do some good deeds, go to the masjid. No, I'm not going to do it. No. The, you disobey them in disobedience to Allah. Likewise with the Muslim governments. In a prophetic hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet والسلام, said, Sami wa ta'ala, Mariyah Muslim, Bima yuhibbu wa kariya, ma lam yu'miru bi ma'asiyatin, bida umiru bi ma'asiyatin, fala sam'a wa la ta'a. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Hearing and obeying the Muslim authority. I know you guys hate it. You guys, it, it hurts your heart. You don't want to hear that about Saudi Arabia, about any Muslim country. Just clean your heart. Sami wa ta'ala, Mariyah Muslim, Obey, hear and obey the Muslim leader and that which you love and that which you dislike as long as they don't command you to do disobedience to Allah. And if they command you to do disobedience to Allah, there's no hearing and there's no obeying. Like the example we just mentioned and as the scholars have defined for us and let us know from education, not from keyboardism, not from keyboard warriorism, not from listening to tech theories and dogs of the hellfire, but yet we know this from knowledge. That, that does not negate the thought, the obedience to your to the Muslim leader, even if they are drinking alcohol, even if they're selling it, even if they have bank interest, even if they're promoting it. They have not disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just by doing those acts and those sinful acts, nor does that negate their obedience in totality. So as a Muslim, we understand from this text that the Obedience to the Muslim authority is in that which is in obedience to Allah. And we don't obey them in that which is disobedience to Allah. It also lets us know, if you go to the chapter called Kitab al-Imara in Sahih Muslim, you'll find a whole chapter dedicated with Ahadith Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not every Tom, Dick, and Harry on the YouTube. You'll find a whole chapter from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is for Muslims because we a prophet, his name is Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and he's the last prophet and messenger after the other prophets so what we believe is we follow him and we follow his statements and his actions and we try to also exhibit the manners that he has commanded with and so in this chapter in this famous book called Sahih Muslim which is one of our authentic sources in Islam we find a whole chapter dedicated to obedience to Muslim rulers and how to deal with them and the Prophet وسلم, said as long as they don't have open disbelief which you get, which from a law you'll see the Barhan, you'll see clarity. There won't be any debating, everyone's debating. These guys on the internet said it, they're disbelievers. Oh, my scholars, they're in prison. They said they're disbelievers. Oh, some tech feedies over here. ISIS said, Abu Bakr, uh, what's his face said, who's dead. Um, this other guy who's a tech feedie who's in jail, he said it. No, that's not what the Nus means. The Nus means that it's from a law, and I thought it with clarity. Indisputable with ulama, ulama of sunnah. This isn't enough for you, Mr. Seeker. Listen to one hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu See, we're giving you context. We're giving you evidence from the Quran and the sunnah. We're not giving you desires. Unfortunately, it seems from your stance, that might be a hujjah. I don't know. Study Islam. The Prophet sallallahu said in a beautiful hadith in Sahih Muslim, which is also a very important book to us as Muslims on the authority of Hudayfa bin Yaman, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No doubt we had an evil time. So Hudayfa was telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith in Sahih Muslim about this, the days of ignorance, that we came you know, from an evil time. And Allah brought us a good time in which we are now living in. Will there be bad after this time? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, yes. I said, will there be good time after this bad time? He said, Allah alayhi wa sallam, yes. I said, will there be a bad time after the good time? He said, yes. I said, how? Whereupon he said, Allah alayhi wa sallam said, there will be leaders who will not be led by my guidance and who will not adopt my ways. They will be, um, there will be amongst the men who have the hearts of devils in the bodies of human beings. I said, what should I do, Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if I happen to live in that time? He, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, said, you will listen to the emir and carry out 
his orders. Even if your back is flogged and your wealth is snatched, you should listen and obey. The Prophet Muhammad says, in Dahra Dahrik, wa Ridd al Malik. Hear and obey, even if he's beating your back. So if you want to make tatbik of this, and you're saying, well, in this country, they're oppressing. This country, it's so difficult. This country, the leader did this. Okay. As long as they're in the fold of Islam, and I know you make take fear of them, that you hear and obey. And that's the shahid. That's the point. Stay away from false ideologies. Don't let your emotions rule you. You probably live in the UK. You probably live in a, a country that totally governs by other than what Allah reveals. And you are obedient under those laws. And you do everything that they tell you. But yet, you're going to criticize Saudi Arabia? That doesn't mean they're free from mistakes. It doesn't mean that there isn't oppression. It doesn't mean there isn't sins. But it's for us, for those who are following the way of the people of the Sunnah from the past up until now, meaning the Sahaba, up until the Day of Judgment, to supplicate for the Muslim rulers, even if they are oppressive and even if they beat your back, you pray that Allah guides them because through their guidance, their countries become guided. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil and guide all the Muslim rulers to the truth, to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and bless them to lead by it and for all the Muslim countries to have peace and stability based on the book and the Sunnah. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ولو كري الأهل البدع ولو كري الكافرون وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد